Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. This week we've got something really special. I've got these this new figure from Mindworks Games. Now this is part of a Kickstarter that's going on right now. It's awesome. Look down in the link below. You can check out the Kickstarter for all these awesome figures. And what's cool about them is they are all inspired, done, crafted, under license, based on Brahm artwork. Now, if you're like me and you like classic fantasy art, well, then this is something pretty special. So I wanted to do something special. Today, we're going to take this figure up to display quality. Now, this is going to be part one of two, and this one's going to focus all on the skin. So if you've ever wanted to see or learn anything about painting display quality skin, this is the video for you. So let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vincey V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vincey V style. So first, just a little commentary on the figure itself. It arrived to me uh, from Mindworks, obviously a little early, or a little early uh, before this Kickstarter was going, so I'd have a chance to record and paint this. The figure went together really well. I found it to be extremely high quality in the cast. Uh, I didn't really have any issues with, needed very little cleanup. Uh, everything went together smooth, effective, absolutely a joy and very simple to assemble and get primed. So uh, from that regard, absolute A+, plus, no problems. So if you have any concerns about, you know, oh, but it's made of resin. This isn't resin like GW resin or something. This is an extremely high quality cast uh, that you will absolutely find easy to assemble and paint to a high standard. Okay, that out of the way, let's get into the painting. So I began with this, now this is just over a black primer. This is using my new favorite primer, which is Mr. Hobby. We'll do a video on that in the future. But for now, I wanted to lay down just a nice, simple base coat on the skin. Uh, so I'm going to use a couple Army Painter uh, colors here. This is just a simple little two-tone, uh, 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 two very close colors, and really they're not important. Because I'm going to be using an unusual lighting scheme, I'm not going to Zenithal Prime this. I wanted to work over black, and that's because each part of this model and its light needs to be handled very carefully. She's not going to have a generic diffuse all over light. As a result, I wanted to work over black and control every aspect of the light. I talked about this before in my priming video. You can check that out linked up above. But uh, once I just had basically applied the base coat and got the skin there, I used the secondary color to add a little bit of a highlight and just kind of set roughly where I'd want the tones to be. These two colors are not very far apart, so I wasn't really committing to anything. I was just doing a general sketch of the light and then seeing where it would go. So with that done, now it's time to get into the actual painting of the skin. This is a very fast process. I just kind of slap some paint on it real quick for the base coats. Now let's do the fun stuff. So I, these are the colors I am going to be using for this. And this is a little bit of a spread. You'll notice we've got our nice deep blue on the end for some dark shadows. And we're going up to a traditional sort of ice yellow for the highlights. We'll be doing a lot to tone this skin, but this is going to give me a nice value progression. So what I did then was begin by sort of placing the shadows. Since I already had a little bit of a soft highlight in there, just again, more of the concept, the idea of a thing, I wanted to get those shadows in place. And this is actually really important. When you're going to do a very dramatic lighting scheme, as I am here, where you place the shadows and how strong they are and the exact volumes of them matters a lot. What is actually accentuated by the light? So I begin by just placing those shadows. I start with sort of the deeper red tone, and then I begin integrating in the Payne's Gray. Now, this is going to be a bit of a journey. When I'm doing this layer, I'm working uh, with a sort of thin layer consistency. We're still in layer. I'm still absolutely going to be, uh, you know, changing the color of the area I'm painting, as you can see, but I don't want it to be so thick or build up or anything like that. I basically just want to make sure we get those shadows shaped in there uh, and sort of I understand where they're going to fall. The highlights, though, are where the action's really going to come together. So my next step, then, is to begin the highlighting journey. And so with this, the, the, the long and short of this is I'm not actually progressing as much through, like, the tones you saw me use. 
So the sort of uh, mid-tone flesh tone is always going to be present until we get to the very highest, 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 tiny little specks of specular highlights on the skin. But what I'm going to do is use the pink and that sort of uh, kind of olivey white uh, skin tone, or that sort of olive white skin tone, to then modulate that skin and slowly bring it up in value. So what I do is I start with the flesh and begin mixing in basically the pink and the more sort of uh, cream tone uh, to start modulating brighter and brighter and brighter values. About halfway up this progression, I'm then going to also start integrating the ice yellow, but that's for the future. Now, again, I'm working in thin layers, uh, and every one of these things that I apply, you're going to see that it basically gets at least two uh, to three layers of this highlight to build up to sort of opacity, and each time I cover a little less and less, so that that way I have a little bit of fade into the lower levels. Uh, as, I said, as I said, as I build up into the higher highlights, that's where I get out the, the ice yellow, start integrating it in. We're going to focus that completely on the face, the upper torso, uh, and the tops of the legs that are completely upward facing. An important note about highlighting and, and display slash competition level painting. I am not highlighting every single area of this miniature to the same degree. So on her hands, or her arms, or the back of her leg, the lower parts of her leg, stuff like that, I just don't come up as high. Those sort of cap out before I ever add the ice yellow. And in fact, by not adding that really intense uh, fluorescent yellow, including color, ice yellow, I end up naturally diminishing those areas of the figure. So we get a focal point right towards the face, and then the upper torso, and then a little bit of the leg to create that light line traveling up the center of the model. Now at this point, all of it's pretty rough, but again, I'm focusing the volumetric highlights up toward the top of the figure. I want to gather the light up there in that sphere. Remember that the first thing you have to do when you're sort of thinking about lighting in this way is remember that the entire volume, the entire miniature, is itself the very first transition you have. So running that spectrum of highlights to lowlights, as I get into the lower part of the miniature, I'm using something just above my midtone effectively to highlight. And a few places I might experiment a little higher, see how it likes, and then if I don't like it or if it's too bright, I'll knock it back later. And then only as I work in and understand the general lighting scheme and the travel that we have over the whole miniature, do I then focus in and begin doing the individual volumes. So I can understand exactly where to place that spectrum. So her face, for example, has much, much, much more high value light on it. One, because she's kind of, her face is very forward and very up and very in the light. But also because that's where I want to draw the attention to. Okay. So with that all done, it's still pretty rough. Our next step is to begin just doing some glazes. Pretty straightforward. I'm going to just glaze with the brush and kind of smooth these out. Now at the same time, I'm not just bringing them together or smoothing them down through the glazes, although that is what I'm part of what I'm doing, but I'm also adjusting my volumes. Taking it all in now that I have the full gamut of highlight to shadows, this is your adjustment phase, and that's why I'm doing it with the brush. I'm basically going to start smoothing out those blends, and also if I see something's out of place, something low on the miniature that's too bright, something higher up on the miniature, an area that I didn't quite pay enough attention to. So I start modulating brighter and darker through the glazes. The key here is I don't need it to be perfect because of what we're going to do in our later steps. I'm just trying to smooth out the really rough transition and brush marks to make my life easier. Once that's been done, it's time to move to the airbrush. Here I'm using uh, my Harder and Steinbeck uh, Infinity, and I'm going to go ahead, uh, this has a 0.2 needle in it, and I'm going to go ahead and basically uh, use the exact same glazes and color mixes that I just did to again begin smoothing out those areas. Now a quick note that I want to draw your attention to as you see the airbrush working here. I want you to look at the bottom of her right thigh. You'll notice that the thigh progresses into shadow and then back into light on the very bottom. That's not an accident. 
Whenever you have uh, surfaces of skin that are facing completely downward, you actually don't want to cast that in the deepest shadow. Skin itself is satin and will quite often, especially if you're dealing with pale skin tones, reflect bounce light from the ground. So I pass from my high highlight on the top of the leg into the deepest shadow, which is actually on the side, on the perpendicular area of the leg, and then back up into a mid-tone. So that mid-tone is going to be the reflected light. It is amazing how much that little bounce light will do to sell the illusion that your figure is existing in credible, realistic lighting. Okay, with the airbrush glazing out of the way, it is now time uh, to turn to toning the skin. When we're dealing with competition painting, we've got to go all the way. So you might look at this skin and think, Vince, it looks great. Why are you still doing anything? And you're absolutely right. There's nothing wrong with stopping at this point. If I was trying to just paint something pretty nice or for my personal collection, I may very well do so. But since I want to show you really how far you can go, it's time to go to the next step. So here I'm going to use some Army Paint Speed Paint 2.0. I know, probably not the thing you think of it uh, as being used for, but it's great in this way. Army Paint Speed Paint 2.0 is perfect through the airbrush as filters for skin. It really is an exceptional product for this purpose. So here you see the gamut of colors that I'm going to be using. All of these, when I put them through the airbrush, will be thinned basically three to one thinner to paint. So I am working very thin with something that is already very thin and transparent. I'm going to be using both a sort of yellow pink, which is great for the uh, blends right off the highlights. I'm going to be using an, a little bit of pink purple, which will reinforce and deepen and uh, add more chroma to my shadows. And then I'm also going to be uh, using a little bit of green yellow down in the lower parts of the model. That's the secret sauce right there. So classic fantasy art always has these subtle green yellow tones, especially in the legs, the lower parts of the model. You'll see this in a lot of Brahms work, which I'm drawing on as inspiration for this particular model, but you'll also see it in uh, things like Frazetta and other really awesome fantasy artists. So uh, I begin by just sort of laying down the lighter colors. And again, this is super duper thin, three thinner, one drop of paint. You'll see it's not having much of an effect, but what it does is it filters the skin. It hides a little bit more of our blending, smoothing things out, but also it adds a more richness. The more tonal variation you have in skin, the more credible and realistic it feels. The subtle yellow pinks add a lot of richness to the upper mid-tones. I then move into the shadows, taking some of the purple reds, which of course, if as our shadow color is cold, is blue, where blue meets red, you get purple. So a little bit of that to reinforce the deepest shadows. And you'll notice as I work my way around the figure in all of these cases, I'm not applying this in one pass. I am working carefully, slowly, short controlled bursts, and I work my way around the entire figure two to three times at least, often many more, because glazing with the airbrush is so darn fast. And so what I'm doing here is just each time applying a thin glaze, letting it dry, and then looking at the miniature, turning it, getting a sense of it. Am I happy with the shadow? Do I need to apply more? Do I, does it need to be deeper, lower, more shadow, higher, higher highlight here? You know, and I'm, as I'm working with that, I'm then making these small adjustments on every place that I'm pointing my airbrush. So it's important during this stage to be very thoughtful about what you're doing as far as your overall lighting scheme. Don't go into autopilot and just cover the shadows with the shadow and the light and the midtone with the light and the midtone. You're also making adjustments. As you're working this kind of high quality skin, you need to constantly be thinking about how you're making adjustments to your overall lighting scheme. My final thing then here is the yellow green, which I'm going to do in mostly the legs as well as a little bit in the arms and just a tiny touch of it in the, on the lower underside of her breasts. Uh, that's going to add that slight yellow just adds so much richness and tone. It hits that tan olive. And then as you build it up, you will accentuate and bring out the green. 
So you don't really see the green expressed until there's enough yellow to make it pop. Also importantly, the green is going to get largely killed by the red, laying a thin green over a red, complementary colors on top. So we kind of subtract out the green and instead what you get is a rich brownish tone. That magic of using complementary colors to come together gives you something super rich. But on the very low parts of the model, I will make enough passes to actually have a little tiny amount of that green get expressed, just a hint, just a filter, just a feeling. And again, it just adds this incredible richness to the overall figure when you have this interference color. And that's really what the green yellow is doing. It's adding a completely sort of adjacent hue, uh, in some cases comp partially complementary, to act as an interference color between my midtones and my shadows that draws a little more visual interest, adds more hue, more chroma, that just makes the overall piece more visually interesting. So, with that done, it's time to work a few small details. I hit things like the lips uh, and pull out a little detail there, as well as the uh, eyebrows and the top of the eyes. So, uh, all of that done, that's the skin completed. Now, I didn't do the eyes yet, and you'll have to come back next week where we'll cover things like the hair and her dress and the rest of this figure as we continue the journey to working this awesome Mindworks figure up to competition level. But all in all, I think right now we're in a pretty good place. That skin is really popping. I am loving how it looks, and I am very excited for next week. All right. With that, I thank you so much for watching. If you like this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We have new videos here every Saturday. Don't forget to check out the ongoing Kickstarter. It's linked down in the comments below. Mineworks is an awesome company with awesome people. Uh, and so I just really like working with them. I was happy to do this. I was happy to get the figure. Um, if you want to support the channel, hey, guess what? You can uh, also pick up your hobby supplies through any of the affiliate links down below. My lights, my brushes, all those things I use are all linked. Doesn't cost you anything extra. In fact, it often saves you money, especially in the case of the lighting and some of the paints. And it gives the channel a little kickback. We really appreciate it. If you're interested in painting figures like this and you want to take your next step on your hobby journey, my Patreon is down there focused on review and feedback and taking your own personal next step. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.